Hi, welcome back to the channel. Today I'm going to talk about this DIY ASCOM compatible flat panel, why I decided to design it, and how you can build your own. So stay tuned. First, let me talk about what I am not going to cover in this video. What are flat frames? Why use a flat panel? How to take flat frames using Nina? Or how to use flat frames in the calibration process? Etc. For those, there are a lot of really great videos on YouTube already, uh, including those by Quiv de Lazy Geek, fellow Frenchman who currently resides in Tokyo. And I really recommend that you subscribe to his channel. So I will put the link to his videos in the description below. So why did I design and build my own flat panel? Well, first of all, I've recently made the decision to switch from a one-shot color camera to a monochrome camera. Up until now, I have been using a ZW ASI 533MC Pro and it works great. But a monochrome camera will give me better results. More specifically, a monochrome camera will give me a higher signal to noise ratio for the same exposure time, and it will also give me more flexibility on narrowband targets because I'll be able to have different exposure duration for different filters. What this means is that I'll be going from two filters to seven filters. Right now with my one-shot color camera, I'm using a luminance filter and a dual narrowband filter, which is the Optolong at Extreme. With a monochrome camera, I'll be using seven filters, which are luminance, red, green, and blue, H-alpha, O3, and S2. All of those filters have very different transmission characteristics. For example, the 3 nanometer H-alpha filter I'm planning to use transmits only 1% of the light compared to the luminance filter. With a non-dimmable flat panel, what that means is that flat frames would require very different exposure duration for each filter. And that is when an ASCOM compatible dimmable flat panel really comes in handy. Because it is controllable in software, the software can make the panel brighter or dimmer depending on the filter that you're using. And that greatly simplifies the process of taking flats. Of course, there are commercial flat panels available out there, but they can be quite expensive and they're never quite the right size. They're always a little bit too big for what you need because only limited sizes are made. There are also DIY solutions that already exist. Here's a great thread on Cloudy Nights where the author explains how he purchased a really cheap LED tracing panel on Amazon, opened it up, removed the electronics, and put his own circuit board to make the panel dimmable. That's perfect for his setup because he has a remote setup and he doesn't mind having a very large um, flat panel in his dome. But I have a portable setup and I wanted something a little bit more optimized for my equipment. All right, let's talk about some of the things that you'll need if you want to build this project on your own. First and foremost, you will need a 3D printer. Nothing fancy. I use a Creality Ender 3 V2 with a few upgrades to make my life a little bit easier and to allow me to print PETG. But this project can be printed using PLA, so the stock Ender 3 V2 would work. You'll need to purchase an LED flush mount ceiling light like this one. And when you receive the light fixture, open it up. There are a few screws on the back. Uh, remove the, the white background, the light getting plate, and maybe the diffuser, and you can toss everything else. You'll need an Arduino compatible microcontroller. I'm a big fan of the Siduino Xiao. And if you buy it from Seed Studio, directly, uh, I think it only costs about $5 US. It's a really small unit and it has a USB-C connector. You will also need a high density LED strip like this model that I bought on Amazon. And finally, you'll need a few miscellaneous things like a soldering iron, a perf board, a power MOSFET, some resistors, a DC power jack, 
a 12 volt DC power source. If you're going to do electronics project, I recommend a bench power supply because they are very useful, but any 12 volt DC power source would do. 3D inserts for 3D printed parts, uh, metric screws, some electrical wires, and a white acrylic sheet for the diffuser, unless you want to use the diffuser that you got from the light fixture. As usual with all of my projects, I put all of the code in GitHub. I will include a link to this repository in the description below. This repository contains the 3D files that you'll need, specifically the FreeCAD model file that you'll have to edit in order to customize the flat panel for your own telescope. It also contains the code for the ASCOM driver and the Arduino firmware. Finally, the README contains a lot of instructions necessary to explain what you'll need to purchase, how to compile the software, how to build the electronic circuit, and how to assemble the flat panel. Here we have the flat panel connected to the computer using a USB-C cable and to a 12 volt DC power supply. In this case, I'm using my portable field battery. We are going to control the flat panel using Nina. So in Nina, in the equipment tab, you can go to flat panel. And then if you've installed the ASCOM driver, you should see Dark Sky Geeks flat panel in the dropdown. You can open the settings dialog and by default, the option auto detect COM port should be selected. You don't need to change it. When you connect, it's automatically going to detect which COM port the device is connected to. Then you can turn on the panel and turn it off using the toggle button. You can also change the brightness. So for example, here I'm going to set it to 30. The maximum value is 255. And then we can try maybe 150. You might be able to see a little bit of flickering. I'm not sure if it's going to show on YouTube. The reason is because I am using PWM or pulse wave modulation to change the brightness of the panel. And I am recording at 60 FPS and there might be a little bit of stroboscopic effect, but that's completely normal and nothing to be uh, concerned with. That's also one of the reasons, by the way, it is recommended to take exposures of at least one second when you take your flats. And then you can turn it off and then disconnect the panel. So this is all I have for today. Here's the completed unit, by the way, with a nice lid on the front to protect the diffuser plate. So it's kind of cool, right? Uh, if any of the instructions uh, were unclear, please leave a comment in the comments below or you can even file an issue on the GitHub repository and I will update the README accordingly uh, so that any viewer who stumbles upon this video will uh, have the right instructions. So until next time, thank you for watching.